Hannah Cornelius was born on February 13, 1996 in Cape Town, one of the three capitals of South Africa. She lived with her parents, Willem and Anna Cornelius, and one younger brother. The family was upper class and had a very comfortable life. Her father was a judge and her mother had a successful law firm. According to her parents, Hannah has always been very quiet since she was little and never gave them any trouble. As a child, she was shown to be quite selfless, caring about people and always wanting to do something to help them. On her 16th birthday, Hannah said that she didn't want to get any presents as she didn't think it was fair to spend money on herself while there were so many people around her living in poverty. She then decided to take all the money that would be spent on her gifts and bought several toys and distributed them to needy children who lived in a nearby settlement, which she did on all her subsequent birthdays. According to her friends, Hannah was a kind, cheerful and fun girl who was always willing to help others. They also loved watching her play the piano, which was her favorite instrument, and she played it very well. Despite Hannah's parents being law graduates and influencing their daughter to follow the same path, Hannah decided that she wanted to study languages, literature and philosophy, and after finishing college, she wanted to go to study in France, which was one of her dreams. She then enrolled at the University of Stellenbosch, one of the oldest universities in the country located in a neighboring city. According to the young woman's father, both he and his wife were upset that Hannah didn't want to follow the same career as them, but over time, they understood that she would walk her own path and that this decision made them feel more proud of their daughter. On May 27, 2017, at around 3.23 a.m., Hannah stopped her vehicle near her friend Cheslin Marsh's house, whom she gave a ride to after they returned from a bar. They stayed for a while talking in the place, until four men who were nearby saw them and approached them. These men were 33-year-old Vernon Whitboy, 29-year-old Nashville Julius, 28-year-old Eben Van Niekerk, and 27-year-old Geraldo Parsons. Armed with a knife and a screwdriver, they approached Hannah and Jocelyn who were in the car talking. One of the men placed the screwdriver in Hannah's chest and the others began stealing her and her friend's money and belongings. As soon as the men took everything, Nashville Julius, one of the four criminals, left the scene with some belongings and the other three decided to kidnap Hannah and Jocelyn. One of the criminals climbed into the back seat with Jocelyn, while the other two pressed Hannah between them between the front seats. The criminals walk a few miles with them until they stop the car and tell Jocelyn to get into the trunk. Then. The criminal who was in the front passenger seat goes to the back seat and Hannah gets in front with the other criminal who was at the wheel. At around 4.30 a.m., they go to a gas station where security cameras recorded their passage. Vernon Wheatboy, one of the criminals, gets out of the vehicle and goes to the cashier to try to withdraw money from Cheslin's account, but he can't as Cheslin gave him the wrong account pin, which ended up making the criminal very angry. Hannah cooperated with the criminals all the time, she didn't say a single word, she just kept looking straight ahead. The men told her that they would just use their car to go back to their homes and they released her, but they were lying. At first, they went to the dealer's house to buy methamphetamine and then around 5.30 a.m. they headed to a neighborhood called Cryfontaine, which is on the outskirts of Cape Town. There, the criminals took Cheslin out of the trunk and brutally beat him with bricks for giving them the wrong account pin. The boy ended up unconscious and the criminals thinking he was dead, bending him at the scene. According to Cheslin, he only regained consciousness the next day and went to get help. He was left with several sequels, including the loss of hearing in one of his ears. Hannah, still in possession of the criminals, was terrified of what had happened and began to ask what they intended to do. At around 6 a.m., the three men took Hannah to a secluded spot next to a paintball field and there they raped her for about an hour and a half. According to the criminals themselves, Hannah was very shaken and begged for her life. At around 7.40 a.m., the three men force Hannah back into the vehicle and drive about 12 miles to a country road next to a vineyard and stream. There, they dragged Hannah out of the vehicle and stabbed her in the neck region. Not satisfied, they took a 35 kilo stone and used to crush the young woman's head. After killing Hannah, the criminals left the scene and instead of going home to hide like most thugs usually do, they went after other victims. They spotted a woman who was alone on her way to work and started chasing her after her stealing her purse and cell phone. At around 1 p.m., the criminals still had Hannah's stolen car and had already claimed several victims. One of them was a woman they kidnapped and went to a gas station in the city of Breckenville. There, security cameras recorded Vernon Wheatboy withdrawing money from the bank account of the kidnapped woman who was in the backseat of the vehicle along with the other two criminals. 
After the looting, Fernand returns to the vehicle and the three men take the woman near the place where they raped Hannah and then they released her. The gang proceeded for another town where they found another woman who they also stole from. Eben van Niekerk decides to leave and asks to be dropped off at a nearby location. The police were already after them, as Cheslin, who the criminals believed to be dead, had asked for help as soon as he woke up notifying the authorities about what had happened. At around 2.10 p.m., nearly 11 hours after the attack of Hannah and Cheslin, the two criminals were still in the vehicle. Geraldo Parsons and Vernon Wheatboy were spotted by undercover officers. The police began to chase the pair who fled at high speed. Soon, a police car also entered the chase that ended on the road that gave access to a farm. Geraldo and Vernon decided to abandon the car and tried to escape on foot, but were arrested shortly afterwards. A few hours later, the police also arrested Ibn van Nierkirk, and the next day, they went after Nashville Julius. Hannah's body was located the same day by two farm workers who passed by the place where she was abandoned. The police quickly went there, where they carried out an investigation and collected the body for an autopsy. At the autopsy, it was found that the victim was brutally raped, which caused numerous bruises on her body and severe damage to her genitals. It was also found that the cause of death was due to a fatal knife blow on the neck that pierced a vital gland and subsequently had her skull crushed by two blows made with a large and heavy object, which in this case was a stone. The crime resonated throughout the South African press. People close to Hannah and Chesley couldn't believe what had happened and were shocked by it. Students at Stellenbosch University the same university where Hannah studied, staged protests and marches demanding more security. A few months after the crime, Hannah's parents created a foundation named after the young woman, which aims to provide support and advice in settlements occupied by poorest people. The young woman's mother, Anna Cornelius, even left her successful law firm to dedicate herself only to the foundation, as according to her, she wanted to continue her daughter's legacy, which was to help the most needy. However, since the crime, Anna became very ill a condition that family members attributed to the loss of her daughter. In March 2018, she drowned while swimming in the sea. She had the habit of swimming in the morning almost every day, but that day, she didn't return home. Her body was found on a beach nearby. Some people said that Anna had taken her own life as she couldn't bear the loss of her daughter. William Cornelius, Anna's husband and Hannah's father, says he doesn't believe his wife did it, but because she was without strain and the sea was rough that day, she couldn't return to the beach and ended up drowning. Willem also said that his youngest son, who has autism, doesn't understand the concept of loss and that every day when he looks at Hannah's picture in the living room, he asks when she's coming back. Still in Willem's words, he says that his family died along with his daughter and that he and his son are no longer a family, they are just survivors, living in the ruins of what once existed. In November 2018, all four involved in the crime went on trial. Throughout the trial, they laughed, mocked, made obscene gestures and swore fiercely which they used to curse people who were there to see their convictions. It was clear to everyone that those four men don't feel any remorse for what they did and they didn't seem to care about the penalty they were going to get either. Also in November 2018, the four accused received their sentences. Vernon Wheatboy Eben von Newkirk and Geraldo Parsons were found guilty on all 10 counts against them, which included robbery, kidnapping, abuse, and murder. The three were each sentenced to two life sentences. The fourth criminal, Nashu Julius, who aided the robbery of the victims and then left with some stolen belongings, was found guilty on the burglary and kidnapping charges. He was sentenced to 22 years in prison. Several people linked to the family and non-governmental organizations that followed the trial closely celebrated the sentence that was given to the accused, although a large part of them still felt that criminals did not pay in the same proportion. Hannah's father, who attended the trial at the time, decided to leave the profession of judge because, according to him, he would no longer be able to be impartial as he always was in all the trials he judged after what happened to his daughter. Well, folks, that was the case today. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching until the end, best wishes, and I see you next time.